Hi guys, it's Claris and today we are going to do a tutorial on creating a nice wildflower floral pattern. And for this I am using my brushes, the mop brush in the one, the Princeton Neptune in the eight, and I'm going to have my number four silver black velvet. And for colors, I'm using um, pinks and uh, oranges and purples with some green. And I'll have some blue as well. So really, I'm using a wide array of colors. So, well, I have those colors ready. So let's just see where it goes. And we will begin. So to start off, I am going to be using... I will be using my... Uh, number four and I'm going to get some yellow for the centers of the florals and so I don't think I mentioned a yellow when I was telling you all the colors I'm using <clears throat> but I'm just going to use a tad bit of yellow just for the centers and then from there we're going to extract and get some um, nice bright pinks most likely. So for that, I'm just going to start off with doing some light little lines very loosely. And then I'm going to take my mop brush and I'm just going to get a bit of my um, <clears throat> Matter Lake red from um, from my uh, collection of St. Petersburg. And I am just going to put a hint of the yellow that I have in it because it gives you a nice, just like a nice pink. And then once I have that, I'm just going to go ahead and from touching the center, just kind of do some light but loose petals. My first one was a tad bit too big. That's okay. I want it to be a lot smaller. So something like that. And then I'm just going to use, I'm going to take the number eight. Um, silver black velvet and just water on it. I'm just going to bring it forward and just touch the edges of these florals that are already on here because I want it to be nice and loose and have that nice organic feel to it so that's what I'm doing here and then just from this I'm just going to extend and create more so we're just going to create some more pinks so the center and then using this brush I'm just going to touch some of the red or pink, extend into this and just create more of the light florals around. And have it bleed in. And then as I have that, I'm just going to go ahead and get some blue stuff happening over here. And now remember, this is a pattern, so you want things to kind of bleed in and look blendy as I like to call it. So I'm just going to create some nice little blue berries. And then once I have that blue on there, I'm just going to go ahead and get some purple involved. And I'm just going to create, touching the center, sorry, the side of that, create another one. And then I'm just going to take all of it off the brush. And then I'm just going to create more. Touching the pink. And if you feel like it's getting too watery, just take a paper towel and you can blend some off. 
just take it right off and that's totally fine. Um, I'm just going to create some more. And then a tad bit up here too. Now, time is of the essence for this one here because you the whole point is to kind of blend it with the colors that are already damp. And that's how you get that loosey-goosey effect. So I'm going to do some of that on this side as well. Too much water on my brush. So I'm just going to take this and take some off. And now once I have that, I'm just going to go ahead and using my number eight Princeton, I'm going to get some green and I've mixed like a brown with an emerald green to get this color. So you guys can try that or try something different. It's up to you. And you're just doing light lines to connect the berries and then just exactly the same way that I did the petals, I'm, I'm doing some leaves. <coughs> and just adding a hint of color into it to kind of add some nice 2D, 3D details. And then I'm just creating more leaves around here because I want it to be nice and airy but light And I'm going to create some over here as well while it is still damp and pull some of the pink. So you see how the pink kind of gets into the uh, stem that I created for the leaf. It's kind of like a nice effect. And then to have like dots here and there is nice as well. So try and do that. Faking it. Um, let's see. Where else? So I'm just going to extend some over here too because these are supposed to be like wild florals and we're just kind of creating some nice greenery to go with it because it's got to be erratic and all over the place, right? So using the same concept, we're just going to create like random patterns around. But you know what? I'm just going to include one more color because... Like I said, I like to do my florals in threes. So here goes my third color. Uh, and for this, I'm just doing a purple would be nice, um, but I am going to go with an orange because the purple could offset with the nice pinks and the blues, but the orange would be a nice contrast with the blue. So I'm just going to use some orange and create a pattern. Uh, let's create the center first and then we'll do the orange flower. So here I have some orange on my number eight and I'm just going to do light little florals, uh, petals. And then once I have that in there, I'm just going to wash off the color and get a slight variation of the orange either an orange with a little more yellow or a little more red just to have it look different. Clearly I didn't have enough of the different color in here so it looks quite similar. But even if you took a yellow I think that would work. So I, we can try that again just so we can see how that looks if we took just the yellow. Um, I'm just adding just a yellow line here. Again, I feel like it's too much um, water and color. So I'm just dabbing some away. And I'm just smoothening out the color here. Yeah, so the thing about doing something loose like this is sometimes you are using too much water and depending on the brush you're using it can actually transition on there and not have 
the most amazing effect. So the way you fix that is by doing what I'm doing. So clearly I've kind of slightly messed up here, but I still like how it's turning out. So I'm not going to redo this or restart this from the very beginning. I think we still have something good that we can work with here. And so we're going to continue. And I'm just doing slight dots here and there to kind of indicate um, perhaps some background buds or what have you extending from the orange flower itself. And you can do different variations of the colors that you're doing. Like you can do a darker orange or a lighter orange. Leave it at that. And then I'm just going to do some of the pink on the top as well. And just doing it very lightly. I'm trying to get a good variety of it in different areas. Representing possible buds from these florals that are kind of hanging around. <clears throat> and there we go. So there you have it. So now using the same selection of colors, we create, we continue to create that pattern all around the sheet. So uh, let's continue doing it. Uh, and. I would make this a time lapse, but I've had quite a few of you tell me that you prefer to kind of see me go along uh, and watch me do it. So I'm just going to continue and do a bit more and let's see where that takes us. So again, I started previously with a bit of yellow for the centers. And this, this time I'm going to give it a, a bigger center. And then I went in with my squirrel mop brush and I got my pink and I with just a tad bit of water I kind of created loose petals and what I'm going to do is midway I'm going to switch to use actually before I switch I'm just going to add another petal here and now I'm going to switch to um, my number eight Princeton and I'm just going to create another petal but this time I'm kind of pulling from the color from the side and not using any more so just kind of letting it blend in that way all right so leaving it at that then we're going to go back in and perhaps do another one. Actually, we don't even have to do any of the yellow. We could just kind of create the illusion of like another floral right this side. And maybe it's facing downward. Just a couple of strokes to kind of indicate there's a flower. And then just adding some dots to kind of give it that continual look of loose florals, wild florals. <clears throat> and then once I have that done, I'm just going to use the number eight to get my blue. And using my blue, I'm just going to create some berry looking things here. Now again, you can see how it's running into this petal here clearly there's a tad bit much of the um, water but I'm just going to continue and see how this settles it might settle well it might not um, and here adding to the mix I'm just going to use the yellow that I had on the number four and I will create some more kind of strokes and shapes just to kind of see how the blend goes with the blue and the yellow. Maybe it'll look more like a green something or the other. So let's just see because remember a lot of the florals, the loose uh, wild florals have um, some very interesting shapes. And so let's just see what we can get from just having some of the blue and the yellow blend 
and yeah, just continue. And now that we have that, just from here, I'm just gonna extend and add, that's too yellow, so I'm just gonna add my green back in. That's not too bad. I mean, that could have evolved into something a bit more. <clears throat> this is how you would typically create like one of those random patterns where you're kind of trying to create something pretty, but it's not, it's more abstract than anything else. And yeah. And just kind of fade off, like go lighter in your colors as you're kind of going towards the edge, rather. And now this side's dry. Shouldn't have allowed it to dry, but that's okay. This is a very um, random wild watercolor tutorial. And I'm going to go back and get some more of the blue on here. Remember to kind of mix some with a purple, if you wish, to kind of get a different um, selection of blue in here. And then also just wash off your brush and create, oh, see, there's still some blue on there and too much water. And touching the blue kind of create more um, little berries or circles that kind of extend outward. So I have one here that's touching the pink and the blue. And here's another one touching the blue and the purple. So just, it creates some interesting variations of colors and shapes and stuff while you're doing this. So that's why I suggest doing that. Um, lastly, we will just go ahead with the orange that I previously had. And I just used the red itself and I've picked up some of the color And I'm just adding it on there. Now, because I just had most of the red on there, it doesn't quite look as orange as this. And I do like this orange better. So what you can do is just take your take a brush. I'm taking the number eight. And you can always just swipe off some of the color if you feel like it's too much. Well, I kind of like it, so I'm just going to leave it as is for now. And possibly do again because this is a very random wildflower tutorial in a loose style I'm just creating variations of green foliage all over I'm going to extend the um, the stems to these as well to kind of give it some interesting colors blended with the blue while we're still we still have that room to kind of do it and the style over here is basically you want to hit the ones that are still damp to get that nice blend of color like the green is blending in with the blue sorry for my nasty um band-aid here but i can't take it off because i got a cut so sorry all right, continuing, I am just going to go ahead because I want to have some of that orange. So I'm just going to take some of that orange that I have and add it to kind of show that there is some of that orange still here. And I'm doing the dot thing again because I like it and I think it looks really nice. Okay, so uh, this is where we're at right now. And again, I'm just gonna add some more over here. This time we'll start off with the actual orange that I like and then kind of go off into the pink. So using my number eight, I'm just gonna create open-ended strokes of this of the petals and then kind of leave it halfway there 
And then once I have that, I'm just going to use the same brush and get some of my lovely pink. And I'm just going to create um, petals, let's say, in this direction. And I want it to be like a nice dark pink. And then we can use the water to kind of blend it. So now once I have that, I think I don't have anything on this brush. Well, I have some pink on this brush. And I'm just creating more petals, but touching the edges to kind of create that nice blend. All right, and you see it gives you that really pretty, pretty blend. And then once you have that going for you, just go ahead, either do the blue or you can do some of the green, uh, whichever works for you. You want to tackle first because they all kind of need to blend in anyways. So just using a different green this time. And it's nice to have different variations, to be honest because it just brings out so much more of the painting when you just have these little tiny variations of color all over the place. And it's just a very pretty sight. And let's not forget the little tiny dots. And I'll just add some on the orange side as well. <clears throat> And then once I have that, I'm just going to go ahead and get some of the blue and create our little berries. And for that, I think I will just use my number eight. You can actually use, depending on the size of the petals you want and the berries you want, you can just use any of the brushes that I'm currently using. I'm kind of switching here and there. Um, it really is up to you. I would say kind of try it all and see what sizing and effects you like and go with that. Uh, just make sure you're using a nice enough blend of colors to give you this nice array of wildflower, abstract, beautiful, I guess, beautiful picture happening. I think that's what I'm looking to say here as I'm painting. Uh, so I just dipped the brush directly into my palette and I got this really thick color. So I'm just creating some nice darker hue shades of these, uh, these berries. And I'm going to use some over here as well while I still have it nice and dark. And then I will take my number four and take some of the blue that I had mixed on my palette. I'm just going to mix some on here and touch the edges of these darker ones so I can get a blend. And again, a it's the details like this that form the big picture. So sometimes you'll notice that it's this, this, the tiny darker areas kind of bring out the, the image even more. And, you know, maybe we will add some more on here as well. And that might add a little bit of an ump to the whole end goal end picture is what I'm trying to say. Image, painting. Yeah. So just adding greenery again in tiny places here and there. And oh, got a piece of lint or something on my all right there we go and so we have that so 
I really like how these little tiny darker blues have shown up and so I am definitely going to be adding some around here as well so while I'm doing that let me quickly make sure you can see this well enough and you just see how it just that contrast just adds opens up the whole thing and just gives it like a nicer feel I guess I don't know how to describe it maybe tell me in the comments if you have a better word for what I'm trying to say here yeah so I just really like that and I'm sure once I add more here it's going to be a very similar effect where you're just going to see it open up into like the next level yeah so just try and be as sporadic as you can about placement <clears throat> And then once you've done it, kind of let go. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. And so this is my rendition of the um, wild floral, loose wild florals pattern. So the whole point is to kind of just create these little bunches all over until you have a pattern that you kind of like. So I'm going to continue doing this and I hope you guys continue do doing this as well and just kind of create your own pattern. Um, let me know in the comments what you guys thought. Uh, um, share this video if you find it useful and you like how it is. Um, sharing the video also helps my channel grow and I love hearing from you guys. So please feel free to message me on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, the links are down below in the description. I look forward to hearing from you guys and please do share your work as well. I love, love receiving it from you guys and just kind of seeing how you do. So thanks guys for watching and we'll chat soon. Bye.